Aska and Kim, congratulations on your recent Oscar nomination for Best Live Action Short Film for the film Silent Nights. Uh, Aska, this is your first nomination. And Kim, you're a veteran uh, Oscar winner, two-time Oscar winner for short films. Uh, how did it feel when you got the news that you'd been nominated? It was uh, fantastic. We were uh, all the team together in the in an apartment in Copenhagen, and uh, we watched the live streaming, and uh, we just screamed like it was like watching a football game, and your team just uh, makes a goal, you know, it, and everybody was eh, and champagne all over. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, very exciting, even though. Uh, very nice of you to mention that. I uh, tried it a couple of times before. It was as exciting this time, you know, because it was really. Uh, I had seen all the shortlisted films. Uh, Aska has not yet seen them all, but I had seen them all, and it was a really, really tough crowd. So um, it was just amazing that we uh, we became the um, among the last fives. Well, give us some insight, um, if you will, and this will help our, our young first-time nominee here um, <laughs> get ready for the experience. Oh, give us some insight into the experience of, of going to the Oscars and of winning the two times that you won. Yes, I mean, um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, of course, been there a couple of times, it always calms your nerves and uh, you know where to go and you know what the rounds is and what to do on the floors and You've been through the luncheon where they tell you to try to keep your speech as a minimum and try to get up there and try not to have papers and all that thing that Aske got introduced to yesterday when we were at the luncheon here. But, you know, I can only say it's, um, it's always very exciting and I think it's really true. You just have to enjoy the moment. Uh, don't put any hopes high because on the two uh, wins I had prior to this, uh, of course, we knew there was a chance for us to winning and and, and at some point, people come and point on you and say, oh, now you're supposed to win and blah, blah, blah. But it's just a very, very important you keep your calm and just enjoy the ride that being nominated is, uh, is, is a win in itself. And, uh, of course, everybody wants to have that statue to go home with you at night. And, uh, but it's just important to keep it in yourself and be happy that you're there and be part of the whole thing. And, of course, coming, being called your name and you have to go on stage is just – even more exciting than anything else in your life. And even though I tried it once, then my second time around, it was as exciting and as now nerve breaking and, uh, and all that. So, but I'll be there right with him and then I'll calm him down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, congratulations again. Um, <laughs> so let's, let's talk a bit about the movie. Ask it, where did the idea for this film come from? Uh, my father came to me with the idea um, it's uh, and uh, and I thought it was a very good idea, and then we started working on the script together. And uh, it it is inspired by the streets and the area in Copenhagen where we live, uh, where there's a lot of uh, legal immigrants uh, in the streets uh, collecting uh, you know bottles because it's very they can't get jobs. They're told they can get here and get jobs. Uh, they they hear this story and and try their luck, but they but they they can't get anything, so they need to work in the streets collecting bottles, and they stay in this shelter at night. And this shelter is is, is very close to where me and my father we live, so we uh, we we watch very close by. So it's uh, and that's where the inspiration to the idea came from. And after that, you know. You write a script, a story, you use your imagination and stuff like that. But that's what started it. Yeah. We'll talk a bit about the, the central love story in the film. Uh, where did that, how did that develop and, and come about? The, 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 the love story. Yeah. How it developed? Or um, is it anything for him? Oh, him? it's great for him. Yeah, but that was, that was the idea that he came to me with. He said, what about making a love story between an illegal immigrant and a, a social worker in the shelter. Gotcha. Okay. That's how we started off, you know? And then we had to figure out, you know, how to, you know, write a dramatic story, you know, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and give them some problems so it's difficult for them actually to get each other, like Romeo and Juliet, in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, 
it's just working and talking about it. Um, at, sorry, can you say what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, uh, and 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 there's some some things that you know his her mother, she uh, she uh, she is a bit racist, and uh, and it ma makes it very difficult for her ever to get him. And uh, he he has a family, even though he hasn't told her about it, which, which make it also in a way impossible for him to get her in the end, even though they love each other. Um, so you know, and um, that's uh, how. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? Uh, the obstacles came yeah, around. Came around. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. And using the holidays as a sort of a backdrop to show the passage of time, it's it's really interesting. How where did that come from? How did that get into the script? I think I mean maybe uh, I I can lay on that a little. I think when we when first ask it came around and it was you know we we talked about that the whole Christmas thing in Denmark is a very big thing. You know you it's a, we we celebrated a lot. We celebrated for a long time, and that's actually where. Homeless people become even more homeless in a way, because the Christmas times in Denmark is very much about embracing, and it's about joining families, and it's about you know love for each other and the, the you know celebrating the, the ones that you love and so on. Mm -hmm. So that would to have a backdrop where you become even more lonely in the streets of Copenhagen, and it's time of the year where you know the lights are only out for six seven hours, and you become very very lonely and. Uh, so I think that was the whole, also the idea to to put it in a backdrop where you see a lot of goodness in a lot of families and you know spending of you know money in the Christmas time and everybody's having a good life and then just to put the contrast. you know the contrast even higher on there without pointing fingers without saying this but just as as a backdrop you know mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about getting the film made, and, and Kim, I guess you can speak uh, more to the financing uh, side of things, but was it a struggle getting the movie made? Yeah, I mean, we actually had ended up doing it ourselves, and, uh, you know, with, with the payment of uh, our company and uh, some from Aske, and, and, and everybody worked for free on it because, uh, you know, the, the funding bodies in Denmark, they, uh, they didn't want to support us at this time because of you know, different things, uh, ask it just out of film school. They all want to have a say in it. And we felt this story was very, very, a story we really liked to, to you know, I wanted to support ask him doing this story that he wanted. And sometimes you get, you get into that system of funding, there becomes many cooks, you know, you become very many people have an opinion and then it can, you know, flatten out the movie sometimes. And we, we chose to just said, okay, we're going to do this now. And we're gonna do this movie, and we're gonna do it our way, and then that meant no financing, and we had to go and 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 get people to work and help us out, and of course there's out of pocket money and all that that we then paid for. Uh, we had to fly to Ghana, you know, we were literally down there in the slum filming and all that. So we did film also the, the you know the filming took place over a period of eight months, you know, days here and there uh, where we could film. Yeah, that was one of the most amazing aspects of it for me was just how, um, you know, epic and scope it feels. You know, I mean, you, you really do go to Ghana and, and uh, it's globe, you're globe trotting for this, uh, for the sake of this film. And was there ever a, a moment where you thought it would be easier just to not have all of that, even though it, it adds so much to the story? Of course, of course. Uh, but uh, I really wanted the. Uh, uh, to um, I wanted I wanted this film to to be um, have a big production value, and that's why I, uh, we chose to shoot in real places all the time. Uh, of course, you could just make the phone calls to Ghana and stuff like that without showing it. But uh, I just think, and you could you could make the movie. Of course, you could, but it would be less interesting. I think it's more. It gives it more colors and uh, aspects to that you can that you can. Go to that place, um, and you know, like we went to Ghana and shoot in the real slum. Also, the scenes in the shelter is also a real shelter, and uh, some of the extras are also real immigrants. So I wanted to have this documentary kind of uh, authentic uh, feeling to the story, and uh, that's why we 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 really fight it to 
to shoot in, in, in the real places. You know, also at Christmas time in the church, it is actually Christmas Eve in the church. It's not extras, it's just real people there. And um, that's what we, um, that's one of our um, ambitions, ambitions yeah. for yeah. this movie, you know? Yeah. And I have to say, just to add on on that, that, you know, I was the one, because of course we didn't have any fundings when asked, uh, because, you know, that part of the story actually developed while we were shooting, the yeah. whole uh, Ghana story kind of developed during shooting. Um, and, um, and then, uh, and then Aska came and said, we have to go to Ghana, we have to go to Ghana. And I was like, no, 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 we can't do that. We don't have money for that. And then he said, no, we have to. And then of course my, my soft heart said, okay, guys, we go, you four go alone. I don't even go, it's just four people, and then we do it for the, the little amount we can do, and then it was amazing. It, of course, adds everything to the movie, you know. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about the cast, the two uh, leads in the film. What made them right for the roles, and what was the experience like working with the two of them? Yeah, uh, but the, the first, uh, the, the, the lady, uh, the main, uh, the woman may, main character, uh, Inga, Malina Biltov, she's called. Um, I worked with her before on a uh, on a film in my film school. So uh, so and uh, and where she also played uh, the main character in one of my earlier films. And I really love to work with her. And I think she's a, one of the biggest uh, new talents we have back in Denmark uh, as actress. So. Um, so it, for me, it was not difficult to choose her. I just knew it should be her from the start, even even before the script was written, uh, fin was finished yet. Um, but um, but the the Kwame, uh, the other, the main main character, um, we uh, we actually found him in a restaurant, and he he's never been acting before in his life. Um, he's a total amateur. Uh, he he works as a chef normally. And um, and I did a casting of like twenty Africans in my apartment, together with Malena, because I wanted to the, the the chemistry to be right. So she was in all the castings, and we couldn't find one that that I was satisfied satisfied with. So we went down to this restaurant, but we had to shoot in a week. Um, so we just had to like talk through the castings and what what are we gonna do, because we had to choose. Uh, one person and in this restaurant we just see this guy standing in the kitchen. It's like an open kitchen um, And I just speak can just feel that he has the right look um, And I says to Malina try look at him um, And we could we, we looked at each other me and Malina and it, it, Without saying anything it was just like you could feel okay We should try this guy and I went up to him and asked and uh, asked if the uh, I told him the whole situation, said we're going to shoot in a week. I haven't found any actors yet. And uh, do you want to try to go for a casting? And he was very shocked about it, but also he thought it was a little bit interesting. So he agreed to do a casting three days later. Uh, and um, he, was, uh, he was just really good. He was a natural. And, uh, and the same night I called him and uh, gave him the part. And so and it's a bit there. Uh, and he didn't believe it and kept on going, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it was just, just, yeah. just such a sweet story. And it just, and he's such an amazing uh, performer in this film. I mean, yeah. we get so much feedback on him being, you know, being great. So we, yeah. that was really, that was a lucky, lucky situation also. Yeah. They are both really great. Um, watching the film, I couldn't help but think about what's going on in the world today. Um, and I'm sure that that was uh, in your mind when you were making it. What do you hope people who see the film take from it? What I want people to know what you hope that then they had just get really bad. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. First and foremost, this is a love story, uh, but but it's t it's taking place and using sub uh, in a, in you know in one of the biggest. Uh, uh, immigrant crisis we have in Europe, um, and 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 I hope that people in the end they, uh, uh, you know, it's not every immigrant. I mean, oh, how do I explain it? I, I want to say um, that uh, there's good there's good people, there's bad people all around the world, 
but but I want to show that uh, immigrants are not um, are not bad. Are definitely not bad people. Uh, it's people like everyone else, and uh, that's also what I wanted to show um, in this film, showing Kwame how his life is. He has children. He has a dream. He has a uh, he he works hard to help his family and stuff like that, and and that's. Because you know, when you in Copenhagen, you see these people around. They n nobody talks to them. It's just like they are ghosts driving around in the cities, and 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 people don't know actually. Maybe not everyone uh, like them and knows uh, uh, where they where they're from, what they're fighting with, and all those things. So I wanted to show you know uh, that that they are people like everyone else, and uh, and. Uh, I hope it will open uh, people's uh, minds so they don't have a thought on when to Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it will come in a <laughs> uh, I'm looking for a word. I can't, uh, I don't know the English word for it. Uh, when you think something about people without knowing it, what is it called in English? Oh, uh, well, I, judging a book by its cover. What? Judging a book by its cover. Yeah, maybe yeah. something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so, um, yeah, I don't know if that was the answer for it. I think, you know, I, I, I'll add on, but I think everything uh, Aska says is, is right on. I mean, and, 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 but I can say a little more that we, like, we didn't, we're not trying to point fingers at what you were asking about the crisis and the political yeah. situation. And that's what I think Aska is, you know, keep on saying for us, this is really, you know, it is a love story, but of course it has the underlying things to it that racism, immigration, refugee things, all the political things that we need to talk about, but we're not, you know, up straight in your face saying, see here how bad it is. We wanted it to make a story that, you know, that was embracing people's love and embracing empathy and embracing, you know, all mankind. I know it sounds a big word to say all mankind, but, you know, to show that just because you're black and white and you are from Africa and refugee or a social worker in Denmark living, you can, you, you can belong together. Yeah. And that's what we kind of feel that the, you know, in the end of the film, they, even though the, the society and, and all the surrounding things around them can't, they can't have each other. They have each other in the end, in their own little way, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much and congratulations on the film and on your nomination. And uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one.